This Asian country is one of the safest in the world. It's one of the top 10 safest countries in the world. And people think it's because they are so rich. They are so rich that they are actually the second richest country in the world by GDP. They are so rich that you don't pay, they, their people actually don't pay capital gains. So if you invested like $100 in something and then eventually it becomes a million dollars and you cash it out, you do not pay taxes on that. But just 56 years ago, they, half of the population was illiterate. They did not have natural resources and their country is so small it can actually fit inside New York City. Remember, city, not the entire state. That country is Singapore. There are 1,361 Singaporeans with a net worth of $50 million. The government itself has no foreign debt. Uh, they do have lo local debts, but no foreign debts. They have no unemployment program because instead of giving just giving money to their people, they actually help them get employment. And it's this wealth and stability that's actually one of the the reasons that the country is really so safe number one they feel like singaporeans don't have any reasons to commit crimes singapore has one of the best welfare programs out there they if they they don't have a very high unemployment rate and their priority is to find employment for their people when they are unemployed but if they really can can find unemployment uh, sorry they can't find employment for you and you're very poor in that country you actually get 450 dollars of cash allowance monthly you have free access to public health and then you get to pay you have access to apartments where you can pay like 25 dollars per month or something so it's not a perfect system they said that there's still a lot of pe some not a lot but some people who fall through the cracks but it is not bad um, and more importantly, welfare is the last resort. So if you don't have a job, the government is actually going to help you find one. So definitely the fact that the government sort of covers the basic needs of their people, they find it no, they find less reasons to commit crimes. Second is the penalties. They're not called a penalty country for nothing. So the penalties are really, really harsh when you get caught committing a crime. Singaporeans take a strong stance against crime and punishment. Um, as I've said, it's, it's so harsh that back in 1993, uh, Singapore actually experienced an abnormally large amount of vandalism, car vandalism. They ultimately... Um, caught Michael Fay, an American who had moved to Singapore to live with his mother and new husband. He confessed to the crime. He pled guilty to car vandalism and he was sentenced to four months in jail and a monetary fine and six strokes of canes. Okay, so they do caning. Now, at that time, the president was uh, Clinton and he said that the, the punishment was too harsh. So they gave him four canes, four slashes of caning, of cane instead of six. After uh, his release, Faye returned actually to the United States and he began doing drugs. He ultimately entered rehabilitation. But his case was sort of used by the Singaporean media and other media agencies from all over the world as a testament to not ever ever mess with Singapore. Caning is an actual judicial punishment in Singapore and you can get caned for a variety of reasons. You can get caned for uh, vandalism, for robbery, for rape, sexual abuse, and you can also get caned for murder if you kill somebody but that is only if they are not planning to hang you. So, so yeah, the only time you get exempted from, from caning is if, you're going to, if they're going to execute you. Singapore also has the Internal Security Act, which allows the government, gives the government the power to, to, um, to, to detain people without trial. 
it is uh they call it the preventive dis detention which is exactly that if they feel that you're going to be a threat to national security even if you haven't actually committed a crime yet they can actually detain you number three is the fact that it is really very very easy to get caught that's top geography it's a very very small country it can fit inside new york city is of course with a smaller country it's easier to to monitor and then it's so well monitored it's cctv is everywhere um so let's say it, it's like if you're a criminal and you're trying like if you murder somebody and you're trying to dispose the body where are you going to dispose it where nobody can see you like there's cctv everywhere it's so highly it's densely populated you let's say for example okay you managed to dispose the body whatever you did with it whatever it is that you you did with the body and you're running away where are you going to run to without being seen? <laughs> it's, so, it's such a small country. There's CCTV everywhere. And car ownership is very low because it's very, very expensive to actually own a car in Singapore because their public transportation is so efficient. And so you will have to resort to biking, maybe skateboarding. I don't know if that's legal in Singapore. But come on, you, you can maybe swim to Malaysia if you don't get eaten by, by sharks. So it, it's just, there's nowhere for you to go. Um, and then there's the access to the internet. Singapore can always access private data. They, it's not a question. It's not even a request. If they want it, you will have to give it. And so if, for example, you're trying to get away with murder and you're trying to search for how to dispose of somebody and they look through your, if they want to look through your search history, then the company will have to give it to them. There's just, they don't have a choice. That's the law. And then there's just the strategic locations of their police stations. It's so well distributed. They can cover the area well. And there's not a lot of corrupt police officers, so you can't pay your way through an escape or whatever. So it is, it is small, it is well monitored and run by honest people. So that's the nightmare for any kind of criminal. And then of course there are local the the other local conditions like the nature of Singapore as a country does not nurture uh, a life of crime. There are no guns, even a replica, a replica of a gun, pistols and other stuff, it's highly monitored and you will face stiff penalties for possessing it. If even if it's a replica, if you possess it and you don't have permits, and then there are no drugs, they are very, very strict with drugs. They are you can get a death sentence um, if you are ever caught selling or possessing drugs. And then there are no slum areas, even uh, the the red light districts. They the red light district, <laughs> they they have no court you know empty lots there are no empty buildings or abandoned buildings or abandoned houses there are no homeless people um singapore's high home ownership and small size means almost all permanent residents have a roof over their head and then there's really just no like a way for any criminal enterprise to develop that's why it's so safe i was there um I don't know. It's been a while since I was in Singapore, but I remember the last time I was, I was there, it was like 3 a.m. And I wanted to go to a store to buy something. And I asked um, the hotel receptionist whether it's safe to actually walk. And she was puzzled why I was even asking whether it was safe or not. And so in, in short, it's, it's, it's so safe. It's such a safe country. And literally, this is literal. Like this is decades ago. I was walking and I was seeing CCTV cameras every like 12 feet or something. So, you know, if you're a criminal, there's just no way for you to get, get away with crime. And that's a huge det deterrent for, for criminals. So if you ever, um, Singapore is such an interesting country. It's so small. It's so beautiful. The food is to die for. So if you ever make it there, at least, you know, you're safe and you can enjoy your stay.